Hey folks, Ray from DCAmerica.com here. Today I've got your first look at the new Zwift New York City courses. Uh, now it's definitely a little different and obviously you know, Zwift's been teasing this for a long ass time. Um, they've been talking about light posts and hot dog stands and all sorts of things like that, but it is finally here today. You can actually ride it today uh, and it's probably not what you expected. Uh, when I talked to Zwift this past summer at Europe, like they talked about making it they said they would take some creative liberties with uh, the New York City course. They talked about how different courses had different like realism aspects where um, something like uh, London and the Richmond courses were closer to more realistic, whereas something like uh, Zwift Island, Autopia Island uh, was on the other end of that. And the new Innsbruck course kind of sat in the middle. Um, but New York City is definitely like way off the charts compared to the rest of them in terms of uh, their creative liberties. Uh, and, and certainly you'll see that right away, whether it be the flying cars, the um, F-Zero style. Remember that game? That was like the coolest game ever when I was growing up. Uh, th those style roadways hovitating, hovitating, levitating above uh, the entire thing and hovitating, hovering, there we go, hovering, uh, everything is hovering, the cars, the buses, uh, the buses are actually like their monorails hanging from, anyways, we're gonna dig it all into that. I've just finished up my first ride on it, about an hour of looping all over creation. Uh, then I'm gonna run through with you the running side of the house there as well uh, and show you that. There's some run only stuff that's worthwhile noting. Uh, so we'll start off right with the cycling side and then we'll jump into the running side and I'll wrap things up. So here you are in the route selection option. Uh, now all these are within Central Park and they're sort of alphabetically on the left hand side there. So the first one was the Astoria Line 8. Then we've got the Everything Bagel coming in at 21.3 miles, 1,789 feet of elevation gain, so quite a big one actually. Uh, the Grand Circuit Central, um, Grand Central Circuit, sorry, basically just a bunch of loops kind of in that area on the southern end of the park. We've got the Knickerbocker going all the way around the perimeter and then kind of loops back around again, followed by the Lady Liberty uh, staying mostly down on that end of the park as well before it kind of makes one final loop up toward the top end, followed by the Mighty Metropolitan. Um, now keep in mind again, all these are in the park itself, but some of them are above the park as we're gonna talk about. And then of course, there is the iconic park perimeter loop, one of my favorite things to actually run when I'm in New York City itself. Then we've got the Rising Empire, just shy of 13 miles. Um, after that, there's the six train, a bit shorter at four miles. Uh, you can see just kind of a smaller loop inside. And then finally on the cycling list, we have the High Line at 6.5 miles uh, and 586 feet of elevation. The last two are to go ahead and basically kind of your surprise me type options. Um, they're gonna mix it up based on what else is going on there. And then we're gonna go ahead and from this ride here, I'm gonna start off with the park perimeter loop uh, just cause it's sort of my fave in terms of things that I'd like to do when I'm in New York City itself. So here we are in game, ready to roll. Uh, now, of course, the first thing you'll notice it is fall. Um, so it's kind of a nice little touch there. I'm not sure if that's gonna be a long-term thing or not, but it is really nice to see like the autumn colors, which is probably one of the prettiest times to be in Central Park. If you've been there before, um, this is definitely it's certainly a nice nice look to things and it's also kind of the main portion of what we've seen up to this point in terms of Zwift's teasers it's always been in Central Park um, and kind of seeing the the leaves and the trees and the light posts that you see there and sort of the the more iconic things of Central Park but it's not until you just start pedaling here that you notice things don't quite match up um, you'll notice up in the corner there some of those skyscrapers are a little bit higher than you might have expected uh, just not quite exactly what you would have thought Go ahead and fast forward around some of these corners right here as I was riding through this. Uh, now this is pretty much exactly what I expected from Central Park up until this point here. Uh, now if you look off to the right hand side, you're going to see some kind of levitating cars going down the street. And then on the left hand side, uh, you're going to see there's like almost elevated roadway up there. And then of course into the trees off the left hand side, you certainly see a lot of big buildings that are definitely not there in real life. Um, but it's really those cars on the right hand side that are sort of the, the first major giveaway as you start the game that things aren't quite the same in Kansas anymore. Uh, and then you you can see right up here, this is more than normally is a lake there, and the lake is still there, and that's actually where you can access one of the running routes if you're running. Uh, if you are riding like me, you can't make that turn up into the, the lakeside path. But of course, above that lakeside path is this entire infrastructure of floating roadways and whatnot that we'll get to in just a moment. Now, as I go ahead and get a little bit deeper into the loop uh, and into Central Park, there are most of the same roads, if not all of the same roads, internally in Central Park that you would expect uh, from a running and cycling standpoint. So you can see this option here to turn off to the left. I'm going to go ahead and continue down to the ice rink, though, down this little hill here, um, going around the corner there. Uh, now, as I go around the corner, you get to the point where eventually there's that hill. And of course, and if you run Central Park, you know of this hill. Uh, it's probably the most painful part of the entire Central Park. You can see it off the side there. Um, but I'm not going to take that turn. I'm not going to stay in the loop. I'm going to go ahead and, and 
freestyle it here, uh, and we're going to go up this hill. And this is where things definitely get different. Uh, this is where you're starting to notice that it's not the same Central Park you know and love. Um, so as we go up this hill, it's about 5% incline, not too bad. I found a couple other sections in the course that are up to 13% inclines. Uh, a bunch of stuff, it's like 8, 9, 10, 11%, uh, but 13 was the highest, and maybe it was 12% that I saw at one point. Um, so maybe there's other sections that are even steeper than that, uh, but that's definitely the steepest one I saw within the course itself because you just kind of cruising up this here on the left hand side there you've got like some sort of metro type platform um, but it's like elevated subways that actually go below uh, the roadway here and you'll probably see them in a little bit there uh, and so you can see there's like this interlock system there um, off the right hand side that you've got running pass which is kind of cool it's a nice little touch in fact these are some of the areas you can run some sort of drone flying car thing went by just a second ago in the upper left hand corner there there's tons and tons of flying cars throughout New York City I'm not sure if that particular one was more drone or flying car though as we spin back around and look kind of behind us uh, you can see that skyline again doesn't really look quite like new york city definitely some of those creative liberties taken right there um, so at this point i'm going to go into a little bit of a montage up here on this upper portion and just show you what's around Okay, as we go ahead and remove ourselves from this elevated roadway, uh, come back down into the park itself, uh, you'll see there's a sprint line coming up here. Uh, so this one is pretty much right next to the baseball parks or like Tavern on the Green, that kind of area um, of the loop, the main loop itself. There's a single sprint. You can see here a tenth of a mile long. Uh, you can approach it from either direction. Uh, so in this case, this was the best day for me to go for the sprint because it meant that I was by default going to get the green jersey. Um, so as you can see right there, that doesn't really happen that often. So uh, uh, winning and I didn't even have to put that much effort into it. It's like the the best of all worlds Now after that I went ahead and I basically took this churn up here to the right and that got me back to the other side of the park So it pretty much cut right across the park uh, and got me off to the starting line area um, Where I pretty much did the entire main loop itself. So that lower loop uh, that 6.1 mile loop um, Just straight up by itself and I'll kind of just do a zip through that And then I went back up top again to go ahead and look at some of the elevated roadways and some of the areas I didn't see before I went back up after doing an entire loop around that whole uh, main circuit there onto the elevated roadway. I was in search for something called the rooftop uh, section, and it was something I'd seen like signs for here and there in like the churn directions, but I never quite found. Uh, but it looks pretty cool, like on the tiny little churn map. So I was I was aiming for it.
Okay, after finding my rooftops, I was complete. Um, also, it was exactly one hour, so that, that did the trick as well. Uh, so pretty much the usual stats that you would expect to see here. Go ahead and click on End Ride, uh, and then you've got the map there. So you can see I went all over creation on this map um, from a, a riding standpoint. Did quite a few of the different roads. There are still a few roads that I definitely didn't hit uh, down on the southern portion of the loop, but not too shabby for a first ride. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and talk running, get my sensors all paired up here, uh, and go back into the route change options. And the first three, the top three routes at the very top there, um, are the running specific routes that are not available to cyclists. So you got the flat irons at 9.2 miles, a beast of a route um, for an indoor treadmill. Then you got the Hudson Roll at 5.6 miles. And then you have the Schumann Trail Loop at 1.6 miles, just a nice little loop around the lake there. Now keep in mind, you can do the rest of the routes that you can see down below there, um, but we'll go ahead and we'll just simply choose this one right here for now and go ahead and get right into things. Uh, and here I am, I'm running. So still some minor little UI bugs there. This, this was technically a beta build. Um, so you can see I'm kind of running into the, the concrete there, but I'm sure that'll be fixed by the time you see this. Um, for the most part, this loop is just around the lake. So it's not like super exciting per se, um, but there's lots of the stuff that you can see all around, uh, all around me, basically going above me, you know, that uh, monorail type thing that we rode on earlier with the track atop that. Uh, so I'm just going to go straight to montage land because I'm not sure what else I can, I can really say about the running side of it. Oh, there's a, the monorail thing I was just talking about. So anyways, on to the montage. And that's enough of that. Yep, that's that's running for you. Um, so just a quick look at this run here. It wasn't a very long run, obviously, just around that uh, lake until I decided to go off adventuring onto the main road there that you saw that turn at the very last moment uh, where I went and just turned left onto the road. And at that point, I can follow any of the cycling routes that I wanted to. Okay, so as you saw, definitely quite different. Um, it should be interesting to see what people think of this. You know, it's something that I don't think it's a bad thing to have a little bit of creativity, a little bit of fun uh, with Zwift. Uh, I think, you know, like a little bit of a, an extra jolt there is probably a good thing. And I like the course. I'm not sure how much I'm going to like the course like a year from now. Uh, it'll be interesting to see it expand. I was somewhat surprised to see it wholly contained within New York City Central Park there. Um, you know, again, with those creative liberties of being above the park and below the park and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm interested to see like where they go from here. I'd love to see New York go beyond the Central Park area. I'd love to see some of the waterfront areas and maybe some of the other boroughs. Uh, that's where I'm hoping we'll see them expand. And certainly they've done it with other courses as well. Uh, so I don't think this is like the end of New York City. Um, and I'm also hoping to see Zwift go beyond just new courses. You know, we've got uh, a few new courses in the last couple of months between this and Innsbruck, and that's awesome. Um, but we really, really, really need world switching. And this, this like, this is the core reason why we need it. The fact that, you know, there, when I was riding today, there was 2,000 plus people out there riding. And with a smaller course, like the New York City course especially, um, we need just more courses that people can go into. Uh, and a lot of times I may not want to ride the course that Zwift wants me to ride. So um, I'm really hoping for world switching. And then I think the other thing I'd like to see over the next year or so is Zwift kind of double down on some of the training stuff that they somewhat dipped their toe into over the last few months or year. Uh, and what I mean by that is that right now we have training plans and you know, you can go like through Zwift Academy and following a training plan, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but those training plans are pretty static. They're not like using a lot of what the other companies in the space today are using around technology to make those training plans adaptive to what you're doing and, and smart and all that kind of stuff. And I think they could do that. I think there's other companies that could either leverage in the space um, or do it themselves where they can go ahead and get beyond just simply static training plans that aren't really the best thing for the athlete in a lot of cases. Which of course isn't to say that training plans are bad. In fact, most people, if they do any 
sort of plan, we'll see improvements, but there's just so much more that Zwift could do, um, especially given the amount of resources they have to do it. With that, thanks for watching. Definitely check out my full post down below. It covers all the hot dog stands and all that kind of important stuff. Uh, and don't forget to whack that like button if you found this interesting and the subscribe button. That means a lot to me and helps the channel grow. Have a good one.